The way this tower cooler is set up looks like a really odd orientation, and it's certainly not one you see very often. But is it any good? That's what we're gonna find out today. Welcome to Machines and More. This particular comparison has definitely been a long time coming, and I know that when we first explored the NR200 cooling configurations, some viewers asked about this vertical orientation. Now, typically with GPUs like this, I always recommend the rear intake configuration since it allows the CPU to take in cooler air and avoid taking in the GPU's exhaust. And that has been a pretty dependable setup. You could also run a Noctua C14S or another top-down cooler as well. And those in general do a great job of isolating the two main heat generators in your typical build. But this one is a bit of a unique setup, so let's just go full circle with the U12A and let's test 360 degrees of configurations and see what sticks. So for tower coolers and Intel sockets like LGA 11.5X and LGA 1200, which basically uses the same cooler mounting pattern, you have a choice between horizontal airflow, this direction, or vertical airflow, because the mounting pattern is square with Intel and you can place the mounting bars how you like as long as your RAM or your motherboard components don't interfere with your tower cooler. Sometimes an extra large motherboard heatsink may interfere, so just take note of that and you will only have one good orientation. With AM4, your mounting pattern is rectangular, so this is usually only an option if your cooler manufacturer has mounting provisions for that, and that is actually quite rare. Now for the Noctua U12A here, you are able to request this special kit, which allows you to mount the cooler for vertical airflow with AM4, but typically speaking, most tower coolers will only have the horizontal airflow option for AM4. Now this particular set of benchmarks will be most relevant to those using a flow through cooler, such as with Nvidia's Ampere Founders Edition cards. But if you have a high powered GPU, like say an RTX 2080 or above level of power draw, then the inferences are quite similar since there's so much heat from your GPU at the bottom section of your case. Now, at first glance, this particular setup is problematic. To have the cooler intake air from where your GPU is might be fine for your GPU, but it could be bad and downright terrible for your CPU thermals, and we'll see just how much of an impact that is shortly. So just a few notes on the test setup here. I am using the Cooler Master NR200 with the vented panel. 10600K on the Gigabyte Z590 Aorus Ultra ITX board. <laughs> Love this motherboard. And I could have gone with an AM4 CPU in the Noctua kit here, but stuck with the Intel chip since that is the more likely audience that could easily run this type of configuration. Since we want the same CPU power usage across all tests, I did lock the voltage for the CPU to 1.25 volts, and I clocked this guy at 4.9 gigahertz on all cores. Slight overclock, um, in a regular use scenario, you might not be running it this way with a static voltage, but this is the most objective way to test. Fans and coolers wise, this is a stock U12A here with two NFA 12 by 25s. And in order to avoid turbulence between the top case fan that is very close, I'm using the same fans at the top and I'm also locking the fan speed so that they are running in tandem at the same speed, which is 1350 RPM. Keeping in mind that these aren't very loud fans. In fact, they're incredibly quiet fans, so even this level isn't very loud. Lastly, RTX 3080 Founders Edition card and the bottom lock to 50% fans, and I've got two Arctic P12 Slims at the bottom. This GPU doesn't need to be paired with slim bottom fans, but doesn't hurt either. These slim fans are very, very comparable to the regular P12s. For the first test, let's take a look at CPU-only th thermals when running Blender's Classroom Render. Against the rear intake scenario, it is quite poor actually, even with the GPU idling, and the airflow just isn't very good there because there is some heat concentrated in that area to begin with. What if we go top down instead? This logically requires flipping the top fans to intake to match the direction of the air cooler. And of course the bottom fans can't change. That part is non-negotiable and you absolutely need to match the intake orientation of your GPU or don't run fans at all. So this runs with a slight positive pressure. The cooler exhaust doesn't have an easy escape path and it kind of squeezes out the side panel. Is it better? Not really. Both of these are pretty rough going for the CPU, and if we just throw in the rear exhaust without the GPU running, that is pretty comparable 
generally speaking to the rear intake and that appears to be the case here as well. So definitely for CPU only scenarios, there's not much of a reason to run this type of configuration. What about for gaming with a fully loaded GPU? I fired up Red Dead 2 on 1440p with high settings running at about 130 FPS. The CPU will see a bit higher utilization here, around 60%, spiking to 70% at times, and this gives everything a good real world gaming workout. Now taking a look at the bottom up orientation, GPU thermals are pretty great here, but against the rear intake, there's a delta of plus 10 or 11 degrees for the CPU thermals. And that is in exchange for only one and a half, maybe two degrees at most of GPU thermals. So it's not great. Now it's bad because effectively you're using the CPU cooler to act as a funnel, taking out that GPU exhaust. And it's instead of a otherwise effective escape route through the top fan, a path of least, uh, less resistance is now available. The GPU's impact on the cooler is so pronounced that even the top-down option, which was terrible in the CPU-only scenario, is now better for CPU thermals. And certainly there's not much of a reason to employ that orientation either, since it gives the worst GPU thermals. Uh, basically, the cooler is exhausting all of its heat towards the card, and the card's gonna take in some of that CPU exhaust. Of course, the worst option for combined thermals is that rear exhaust. As you might know, the Ampere Founders Edition cards have an exhaust pattern that is canted towards the rear, right? It goes out the top and towards the rear. So this is actually the perfect way to take in all the super hot GPU exhaust. So as we knew already, the rear intake is the best way to run a tower cooler with flow through GPU coolers. And certainly the addition of these two configurations doesn't change that recommendation at all. If you are apt after the absolute best GPU thermals, then the bottom-up orientation might be a consideration. But my personal preference would be to go for a bit of balance here, and certainly trading off a degree and a half of GPU temps for 10 to 11 degrees of CPU temps is a bit of an unsavory prospect. The reason this setup works is because this reduces the interdependence of CPU and GPU thermals, and there's a lot of hot air in front of the power supply, but that's all being handled by that top fan. So to sum it all up, I wouldn't bother with vertical configuration. That's, there's not a good, compelling reason to go out of your way for AMD setups to try that orientation. And even though you might have an easy option to do that for Intel setups, that's not a good reason to do so if you have a high-powered graphics card. In fact, that would be a good reason not to. On top of that, either horizontal direction is better for your motherboard and RAM, because in one scenario you vent out the motherboard's heat towards the back, in the other you push the heat towards the top exhaust fan, and the vertical configurations will tend to place the cooler in a position where the RAM becomes insulated without airflow, and that can be very problematic, especially if you're overclocking your RAM. So I hope you found this testing helpful. Thanks for all who suggested trying out this configuration. And you know, sometimes it's just nice to know that the grass isn't greener after all. So if you're curious, I do have the build components linked down below. Please give a like, subscribe if you haven't yet, and thanks for checking in today.